Kaylin, I take it. Yes. All right. It's yep, 10 go ahead. six. All right. Um, let, let me introduce myself and Cooper. Um, I am Professor Ching Lan Luo. I am a professor of landscape architecture here at OSU. I teach students how to design parks and outdoor spaces. And most of my students, when they graduate, they will go um, work for a design firm all over the country and sometimes all over the world. And Cooper, currently Cooper is my, one of my current student and he is a senior student in landscape architecture um, program. And Cooper actually is working in a uh, design office in Tulsa right now. Cooper, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, hi, I'm Cooper. I am a senior and I'm happy to help and glad to be here today. Yeah, Cooper is, um, is one of our top students with excellent design skills, excellent graphic skills. And he is here to help us if you have any questions, both me and him. All right, I would, since we have a small audience here in this room, I would like all of you to use a few sentences to quickly introduce yourself and also tell this, you know, the audience, uh, how did it go for your project um, using SketchUp to um, design this birdhouse? Um, let's begin just from my screen. Um, so, Taya, am I Taya Land? Am I pronouncing your name correctly? If not, please correct me. It's Tia. Tia, I'm sorry. Tia, would you like yeah. to introduce yourself and say a few words about how this project went for you? Um, I. Is there um, a first part of this project? I didn't realize that this was a project. This is just, I thought this was just the room that you watched oh, the meeting. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So there was a pre recorded materials for you guys to learn. And I did have assignments for you to do. And I was hoping during this follow up Zoom meeting, you guys can present your work um, in front of the audience. But if you didn't know, that is okay. Um, why don't you just introduce yourself quickly? Okay. Well, um, I'm Tia. I'm from Washtenaw County. Um, I'm a. Uh, um, sorry, I'm a sophomore and I am pretty excited to learn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, next one, Kate. Kate, would you like to um, introduce yourself quickly? Hi, Kate. You're muted. Hi, my name is Kate Wardlaw. I am from Freedom 4-H Club and I'm really excited to be here today. Awesome, thank you for introducing Introducing yourself. Did you get a chance to study and work on the project? Uh, no, I did not. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Um, and then Kaylin is our um, breakout room moderator here. Um, and then Lauren is a county educator. Um, you guys feel free to introduce yourself or not. I'll leave it to you guys, Kaylin and Lauren. Okay, let's move on to Emma. Emma, would you like to introduce yourself quickly? Yeah, uh, hi, I'm Emma Collins. I'm from the Dale 4-H Club in Palmy County and I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Did you get a chance to study the video and then do the project? Uh, no. Okay, that's okay. Um, 
it's a good for me to know so that I'll know how to move on, um, you know, for the rest of the time for today's meeting. John, would you like to introduce yourself quickly? Hi, I'm uh, John Hart. I'm from Tulsa County and uh, I'm gonna be a sophomore. All right, John, did you get a chance to watch the video and do the project? Um, I tried, but the video like wouldn't work. Like I tried to do it. I partly could be that our Wi-Fi was down. Um, this last week we got it fixed uh, yesterday. Um, and I tried to watch it and it like kept saying like error. It was being oh. really weird. All right, I'm sorry about that. Um, so my video was submitted to 4H and then 4H is has a way to distribute to um, all of you guys. Um, and if you need the video directly from me, I'm happy to send it to you, send a direct download link to you as well, but just let me know. Um, given it looks like majority of us didn't get a chance at least to go through the video and didn't get a chance to do the project, let me just quickly share screen and tell you what this is about, okay? All right, I'm gonna share screen now. Can you see my desktop now? Yep, we can see. Okay, awesome. So um, this um, study material I, um, Cooper and I put together, it's about SketchUp. And SketchUp is a very, very powerful 3D modeling slash design software. Um, SketchUp used to be owned by Google and Google um, sold it to another company right now, at least it's independent. So it's called Trimble. The company is called Trimble. Anyway, so SketchUp is used currently in the world, mostly by designers. Designers like us, the landscape architects, designers like architects, designers like interior designers, or sometimes maybe some other um, designers. In SketchUp, it's such a powerful software. It could do so many things. It could do 3D modeling, say a small furniture, site furniture, like this lounge chair. It could be used to model a robot like this. It could be used to model a building like this. And um, so from very small scale, say machinery, boats and screws to a large complex architectural model or you know a garden and so on. It could be do it could be used to do so many things however mostly it is used by designers right now in my mind this is a such an intuitive yet powerful software it could be used by anyone in my mind so i encourage anyone even though you are not a design major students or in discipline you you should learn something about sketchup it'll be so helpful to for you to design something in the computer and then possibly build it if it's in a, a buildable scale such as a um, birdhouse so that's where this project um you know where the intention was and that's how the project that uh, the the study material was created um so in in my project basically um, they pre-recorded the video. I'm teaching you to build a very simple modeling, which is a very straightforward birdhouse. And by building this, following me, following the video to design and build this birdhouse in SketchUp, you will learn the most fundamental functions um, in SketchUp, such as how to create a board, such as how to make a board longer, such as how to cut a hole in the board, such as how to move a board, such as how to rotate a board, and so on. So this is um, all included in the pre-recorded video. And by learning this, you can design, say, this is such a straightforward SketchUp. 
uh, model for a birdhouse. And you can create more complex birdhouses in SketchUp. And later, maybe you can design a planter for your grandparents, for your parents, or maybe you can design a um, backyard garden for your grandparents, for your parents. And maybe you can design a, a shed or a greenhouse for, you know, for your family property and so on. And you can create buildings, little buildings, giant buildings, or, you know, if you are into creating robots or, um, you know, um, AR virtual world, you can, you can all do, do that. Um, but learning all this through this birdhouse will build you a foundation to know how to use these commands, how to use these basic functions in SketchUp. And let me back up for SketchUp. So SketchUp do have several versions. And the version usually we use in design firms or in my office or in my department's computer lab the, the one that we teach our students in general, it's SketchUp Pro and SketchUp Pro costs money. There's a um, pricing plan per year that you need to pay. And this study material that we put together for 4-H is using, we are using SketchUp for web. So if you just go to google.com and, and search SketchUp for web, it's going to bring you to this page, which is a free. That is the most wonderful thing. And then you do need to sign in with a Gmail account. For some of you are not, um, you know, um, I know that there's some age limit that uh, before you can have an email address, you can help ask your parents to use your parents' Gmail account to sign in. So once you sign in, you're able to get into this SketchUp for web version and um, you can start to use SketchUp. And the best thing for this is that you don't have to install the software. And of course it costs $0 for you to use because it's a free, this web version. And then say you're in your parents' office, you can do some modeling using your parents' office computer just by logging in and you can go back home. That file is saved online in the cloud. You can still open up the same file on your home computer and continue to model this. Wherever you go, there was no limitation. When you go to Europe for vacation, if you decide to model more, you can still log into your account and you know use any computer, which is really, really great. And it's cost zero dollars. The function of SketchUp for web, it doesn't have 100% functions of the SketchUp Pro, but for the beginning stage, I want to say that it's way plenty, way adequate for you to create so many objects, so many um, things and scenes already. All right. So that's kind of the story for this. Um, in the video, basically, I'll quickly... Um, play the video for you. And I'm not going to go through everything because the video is 20 minutes long. And once you get the video downloaded from 4-H, um, wherever they send it to you, um, you can always pause, learn, and, you know, follow my demonstration and follow, following the um, instruction to work on your own computer and then uh, play again, play, pause, play, pause, and then until you learn. So basically in this video, I'm giving you the whole process. I'm Professor Ching Lana Luo. Um, giving you the whole process, you know, how to log in, how to open up the file, and um, how to start to create. And I had a step by step create walls. This is, you know, all the different walls for the birdhouses. Let's create a wall first, the front wall of this birdhouse. There is a hole, we're gonna ignore the hole for now. And the wall's dimension is five and a half inch wide, nine inch tall, and the thickness of the wall is 0 0.71 inches. 
front wall without the, your screen. Click and drag it out. It's gonna look like something like this. Don't do the second clip yet. Just leave the cursor there and you're gonna type some numbers. First, you're gonna type the dimension of this board along the red axis. That is a five and a half inch. So you type 5.5 .5, and then you're gonna type in comma and then type the thickness of the board, which is 0 0.71 inches. Now, all the numbers are in, hit enter on your keyboard and you get a shape like this. This is really the bottom shape of this front wall geometry. The next thing you need to, it's still flat. Next thing you need to do is to give it a height. And we know that the height is nine inches tall. And the next tool you're going to use is a push pull tool right here. Click on it, the first one. Now, if you hover your cursor on this shape, you will see a dotted surface. So you are going to click on it, click once and then pull up. So how do you get nine inches very accurately? You are going to type in nine. So again, on your keyboard, type nine. Look at my lower right corner of the screen again nine is typed in and then hit enter. Now we get exactly the same dimension as. So as you see that there's detailed instruction teaching you how to create these different elements, how to navigate, how to rotate around, pan in the interface, how to make a copy, how to move, how to um, assign a color to the walls and so on. Every, and how to cut a hole right here. And eventually you, so this is adding the floor for the bird, bird house and then drilling holes at the floor for drainage purposes and so on. So everything is included in that video. And I'm gonna leave my email address here. If you have questions or if you have any sorts of, and you know, you, you would like to have the video directly, et cetera, email me and I will send you a direct link to get the video download, downloaded. Questions. And I do hope that um, after you get the, get the video downloaded, you will have time, you will have time to um, study it and design and build your own birdhouse. And later on, you can do all sorts of other objects on your own. Cooper, anything else, anything you want to add? Anything I missed? I don't think so, no. Okay. Questions? I, I know you're looking at it from architectural design, but in as far as 3D printing, can this feed into some of those those programs? Yes, totally. They um so the regular SketchUp file is .skp and um it just need to be saved as a particular type of a file and then the 3D printer will be able to read it and then print. That is a project I'd like some of our members to, to try one of these days in the future. Yes. Yes, I did. So I did um, use the so OSU library, the, um, the main library, has um, 3D printers. So I have taken my SketchUp file there to get something printed from the 3D printer, just all created in um, SketchUp.
And SketchUp, among all the 3D modeling programs, there's 3DS Max, there's SketchUp, and there's Lumion, et cetera. And SketchUp is considered to be one of the um, user-friendly software, if you will, meaning that um, you know, for new users, it's, it's easy to get, um, get a grasp. There are some other professional 3D modeling softwares. It's just, you know, mission impossible to learn just through one birdhouse modeling. We've got a question in the chat. Uh, can you show how you bring an image into the interface to replicate? Okay, all right, of course. So you're asking how to bring and bring my existing birdhouse file into that um, interface. Is that right? So how did I bring this? Oh, um, sorry, this is SketchUp Pro. How did I bring this into my interface? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right, so let me, um, let me new a entirely new page. Okay, so this is a new, so when you just open up SketchUp for web, you just have this one person, which is a standing um, in the origin of, of this universe. Um, you can keep him there and you can delete it. Um, so usually when my modeling gets complicated, I like to delete him or her, but let's keep him there for now. And now this is a blank file, right? And then once you um, have the SketchUp file, you can see that I saved it on my desktop. So here you do open and then go to my device. Triple, triple connect, meaning that you have saved something on triple connect, which is the cloud space. But here, in this case, it's on my device. And then I go to the desktop and the bird, the birdhouse, um, the, uh, the SketchUp file is saved there. And then I do open. It takes a minute to open it there. So do you have to always bring in a SketchUp file? No, actually not. So for the studying purposes, if you have the SketchUp file right in front of you, it's a really easy for you to say, hey, I'm going to create the front wall because you have this visual right in front of you. But you can totally open up a blank SketchUp file and place the video right next to your screen and then just following the video. You don't have to have this in your SketchUp file before you can model at all. Does that make sense? So what if I took a picture of a doghouse or something that I- Oh yeah, to totally, so totally. You just take, can you bring in a JPEG to have there as a visual? No, you don't need to bring it to SketchUp. You just put it on your phone and then just by looking at your phone and say, oh, I'm going to create the four walls of the doghouse. Now I'm going to add the two roofs, the pitch the roofs, the doghouse, and then I'm going to add a, a floor or not floor for the doghouse. You don't have to bring it into SketchUp. So you can totally just do this. Starting from blank. This is a blank and then create a dark dog house right from here. Does that make sense? I'm sure it will whenever. Yeah. So, you know, say from here, you can just start to um, say, I'm going to create a front wall and do push and push and pull here. And now I have my front wall and then do back wall, side wall and the roofs and then you can have everything. You don't have, have to have the picture drag into this interface at all. Okay. Yeah. Very good question. Other questions? Yeah, Doghouse is a great, great um, project. 
um, little library, you know, little free library that is um, some houses will have it and then just promote neighborhood to read more, put kids book, um, you know, fiction book, nonfiction books there and the whole neighborhood would exchange book through that little library. That would be a good project to model to um, furniture, you know, lounge chair. I would recommend you to do um, straight board in the beginning. Don't do curved ones yet. Um, curved ones would be more complicated to model. So try to have all your elements to be all straight. Um, yeah, planters. Planters are simple, basically straightforward. All boards are straight. And you can, um, this is a fundamental tutorial basically. And once you learn more, you get into it, give me some you know, feedback and email me, tell me, and you know, we can maybe have an intermediate, intermediate level of tutorial and it can teach you how to add plants, add some other elements into your modeling um, to enrich your design. Other questions? Um, yeah, um, so Caitlin typed, so you can also contact alexandria.cox at okc.edu for access to the video. So both of our email addresses are there, posted there. You can also print sketches from this, correct? Like if you, you can, can print it out, yes. Okay. Um, Sometimes then, we have projects that we require a sketch of something, and it'd be way better to do it this way than with a pencil and paper. Yes. So, see, I'm sharing screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, so ma'am. Yes. So, there is a print button, and then um, you get it printed on the letter size, et cetera. You can specify what paper size you want. Okay, thank you. Also, um, oops, you can also um, make a PDF out of it if you um, computer allows it. Okay. Um, it still do it through print, but your computer has to have um, Adobe Acrobat, I believe, before you make a PDF out of it. So this is another file that I had um, from previous time. And this was a tutorial to teach how to build a planter. And Lauren, the one that you attended probably was this one. Um, and then you can export it into in this many types of files. See that? And you can download it as a PNG file. PNG file is a similar to JPEG file, which is an image file. So say I'm downloading it as, a, as an PNG. And then you can send that PNG file to someone if you're submitting something say submitting for a competition. And because you submit a SketchUp file, they might not know how to open it. So they don't have the skill that you have. So, but if you export a PNG file, say, see here on the top left corner, which I did, and then you just double click on any computer, PNG can be opened by any um, image viewer, just like that. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. And you can print from the PNG too. Those are great questions. Any other tips and suggestions? Cooper, when you started learning SketchUp, any tips that you had for beginner level of students? Um, I would probably say just practicing, uh, for the most part, and even putting maybe a Google Earth image as the background, and then you can build 
up from that image if you want to create an, an existing building or anything like that. Um, but I, I would just say mainly practicing the program, getting used to it, it's probably the best thing you can do. Good, and those are great tips. Um, one thing, so for, um, so at, say, let's still use the um, birdhouse as an example. When you create one wall, say the front wall, make sure you make a component. This is addressed um, as an important instruction in the video as well. So make a component for the front wall. And then when you have back wall, make a component for the back wall. And so is it for the side wall, for the ceiling, for the floor and so on. Have, making a component is a very, very important because without component, your front walls knows all the all the all the um, points at the four corners will be having a sticky attribute to the neighboring object without being a component. And in the near future, say you want to move the front wall around, you discover that they're all like glue glued together, and then you can't move it around. You can't separate them. So making components, whenever you make a board, make a wall, make an element, make a component, that is ultimate critical. Without component, you're gonna get frustrated very, very quickly. Yeah, I discover some of my students when they just learned SketchUp, they didn't know that they need to make a component and everything is sticky to each other. You, it's impossible to separate them and then just a giant mess to edit the model. And how to make a component is addressed in the video. Make sure that you pay attention to that part. Um, anything else? Oh, Lauren said yes. <laughs> yes. And Lauren, again, let me know um, if you need me to host another in service workshop. Um, and, you know, whether birdhouse or planters, I'll be happy to host standalone just for our educators. And you can bring in your master gardeners if you want. Um, I don't mind that. So anytime, just let me know. We'll figure out a time. Okay. All right. Um, so Caitlin, looks like all questions were asked. And um, so I strongly encourage you guys to watch the video. And if you don't have access, you can email either me or alexandria.cox to get the access. And um, if you have questions, feel free to contact me and Cooper. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, we really appreciate your help. And um, if you guys want to take a quick break, we will start our next workshop at 11. So you can go ahead and go back into the main room. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And um, Cooper, I think we're done here. Um, Caitlin, we're gonna just exit the conference overall because um, I only have this, we only have this session. Okay, perfect. Well, yeah. thank you again so much, both of you right. for your time this morning. We really thank appreciate you for it. being our moderator in this session. Yes. All right. Okay, um, bye everyone. Cooper, you and I will be in touch separately. Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you so much for sharing your tips.